Welcome everyone to episode 37. <clears throat> Today we're going to try to get our inventory system working. So one thing I'm noticing is when the inventory system is open, we're still getting input for moving around, which we don't want to do in this game. <clears throat> In Battlegrounds you do though. You can still run around while your inventory is open. I guess we could allow it actually. Why not? We'll leave it for now. So one thing we do want to do, <coughs> the inventory area of the screen uh, should be centered. And we should make the inventory uh, scaled by the screen size, like we're doing with most things. So <clears throat> let's say that the uh, width, well, the uh, say 25% Of the window width and maybe 75% of the height. And then we want to center it. So <clears throat> we'll get an offset for the X value, which will be the uh, window width. Let's make this uh, int32, because that's what SDL is going to want in the end. So we take the window width minus uh, half of the inventory width, I think. And same thing for height. And then our rectangle should be offset x, offset y. Inventory width, inventory height. Why are we unhappy here? Mismatch types in 32. Okay. Got that wrong. <clears throat> mm. There we go. So that's a little too narrow. All right, that's better. Cool. So now we've got it centered. <clears throat> um, so we're gonna have two parts to the UI. We're gonna have uh, picture of our player enlarged up top and then uh, 
area to see what items are in their backpack on the bottom. So let's take uh, the character. So we got um, player texture is level dot player dot Where's our player texture? I guess it's in one of our ah, okay, so this is the player texture. So we look up the rectangle we want from our texture atlas um, with the at symbol. In fact, we could make this a little more robust probably by saying level.player.room. Let's make sure we're setting that properly. It's always good not to have uh, magic numbers or characters if you can avoid it. That way, if we change this value, Uh, it would still work because it would always refer to player.room. How do you text edit? <clears throat> okay, yes, that works. Good. Okay, so the source rectangle going to be our small image, but we need to enlarge it. Um, so we want um, it's going to start at offset x, offset y. And then we want to make it as wide as the width. Um, and I guess it's square, so we would just maybe make it like this. This might look terrible, so let's see. Oh, we want to draw that on top of our background. Oh, that's big. <laughs> that's kind of funny looking. I wonder if we can turn off bilinear filtering on a per texture basis, or if we should just turn it off entirely. Let's see. First of all, let's make him a little smaller. Um, wonder what just making him half size would be. that in the wrong place. Just trying to get it centered. But I'm too bad at math to center things. All right. We'll start with that. 
And let's look at uh, bilinear filtering. I think you turn it on for everything or off for everything. Here we go. Render scale quality. If we don't turn that on, what do we get? There we go. Now it's pixel art, <clears throat> which I think is probably what we want. But you can do whatever you want. Okay, cool. Now let's make the texture not red anymore. Uh, what's a good brown color? So, oh yeah, I can use trusty MS Paint to look that up. So if we wanted kind of a brown, <clears throat> so this can tell you here what the red, green, and blue values are, scaled to 255, so 149, 84, 19. And again, if you were <clears throat> going to get serious about this, you would uh, probably find an image to use as like a border. So now we've got a little guy showing up. Next step is let's render whatever items we're holding uh, along the bottom. So to do that, we just iterate. Over each item. And let's say, uh, let's see. Use pretty much the same logic we do to render what's on the ground. So we get the source rectangle by looking up the item's room. And <clears throat> we'll take offset x times uh, plus i times uh, 32 for now. And this will be at the bottom. So we'll take the top plus the height minus 32. And then 32, 32. Okay, let's see what we get. <clears throat> So for now, we should get nothing. But if we pick, oh, went downstairs. We pick some stuff up. All right. Got some items. I'm just checking in with chat. Nobody's chat. All right. <clears throat> so I think we should make the items a little bit bigger uh, in both the UIs and make them based on the screen size. Um, so let's see. If we wanted them to be twice as big, um, I 
and we want to make them So I did before. So point oh three of the screen width. So let's make that a property of the item itself. So it'll be in one place, items. Um, we'll call it UI size and we'll make it an int 32, I think, because it's always gonna be used with SDL rectangles, which are int 32s. And uh, this will just always be 64. Oh. Oh, not 64. It'll be, uh, this is, needs to be a float because it's going to be a percentage of the screen width. So. <clears throat> so that way it's really in one place. We make a constant and use it in every constructor. Okay, so now back to our UI. So now we would say uh, um, so everywhere we've got 32. We take the uh, screen width times, I guess we just do it per item. You know what, this doesn't need to be on the item. It can just be a constant. That will be simpler. That's what we should do. So this will just be here in the game package. I don't think we even need to make it capital. Let's try it. Oh, if it's in the game package, all right, it shouldn't be in here. It should be, be in the UI, I think. So it'll just be a constant up here. size is equal to item size ratio times okay <clears throat> oh these errors are weird can we do that yes so Go and go. Uh, yeah, chat. Chat noticed that I was breaking the UI abstraction by putting the size ratio in item. So good catch, chat. So something to note about uh, constants in Go. When you make constants like this in Go, this isn't um, really like a type exactly. Um, you can have like infinite precision in your constants, and the compiler will 
it lets you do more accurate math on the constants. So you can get some weird errors sometimes. It is different than most other languages. Okay, so now we replace every 32 with item size. And the other thing that's good about how we've done this is if we resized, if we implement window resizing, this will just work. Because then the next time you draw it, it's going to look at the new window width and it'll work. All right, we want to do the same thing down here. We'll get our item size and I didn't realize we had made a function. <clears throat> This should be There we go. I don't need to cast that. The other thing we need to check is um, 
when we're checking to see if we've clicked on it. Where are we checking that? Check items. Okay, cool. We were smart and used a function to get the rectangle, so check items works automatically. Good job, good job us last time. So we should probably do the same thing for the player's inventory so that we can detect those clicks as well. So let's do that. We'll do um, get inventory item rectangle. Let's see, how did uh, we will steal our old logic? So this time we'll get the inventory item rectangle and <clears throat> doing it based on index. So I think we can just copy pasta, bring the item size. Oh, we already got it in there, so we don't need it here. And we can call get inventory item rectangle with i. And let's spell inventory correctly. Oh, we need our offset. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. We can move that into there also. I guess we need it both places. Some items there they are okay so we can probably think about how we can repeat ourselves less here but I'm not gonna worry about it yet <clears throat> okay so next step is we want to be able to hopefully drag these things around because we want to be able to uh, have some items and maybe uh, drag and drop them off of ourselves so they'll go back on the ground or equip them, like drag it to your head and have it appear on top of your head. So, first thing we need to know is if we clicked on it. So just like we check um, So let's rename this to uh, check ground items and then fix this here. We'll make a similar one <coughs> for checking inventory items.
So <clears throat> what we're going to want to see here is if if the left button's being pressed, then we could be dragging an item if we've clicked on one. So we'll get our items and our mouse position just like here and iterate over the items. So this is the player items, not the ground items. We get the rectangle for the inventory and see if we have intersected it. So for now, let's just see if that's all working. That we don't we don't need this line because that is getting the ground items. We want the player items. Okay, then. <clears throat> so this is a check that we only do if we're in the inventory state. So we'll do UI dot check inventory items. Previous uh, mouse state current mouse state. output right now to see. So let's delete that drawing inventory output. There we go. Click the inventory item. So what we want to do is draw that item um, wherever the mouse pointer is, as long as we're holding the left button. So we need a uh, somewhere we need to store what's being dragged somehow. So for now, we could just say are we going to drag anything other than items? Maybe, but for now we're not. So we'll say uh, See if that's not nil, then we'll say UI. We'll just say <clears throat> then when we draw our inventory. We 
can say if item equals the drag button, do one thing. Let's move the mouse position into here. Uh, so oh, we have our own mouse states. to pass those in because it'll be part of the UI. of the mouse state. Okay, so all that was just so I could say um, source rec is going to be the same either way. We're just going to draw it in a different place. So the destination rectangle, instead of being here, will be wherever the mouse pointer is. So we'll say position Why didn't we make, oh, that's right, because we're using position. OK. Now, the other trick here is once we're dragging it, we want to keep dragging it until we let go of the mouse. So don't need that anymore. Just complaining about. We need to return a pointer. Okay.
Okay, so <clears throat> um, if the left button's being pressed and the drag item is not equal to nil, and then we don't want to check the inventory items because we're dragging. Otherwise, we do. I think that's right. Let's take it. All right. We're dragging things. So we can see the X, Y position is a little center. That's okay. We can adjust that later. And typically when you do a game, you end up eventually doing a custom mouse pointer too. So that can be change. Let's see what, how it works if we have multiple, multiple things. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So drag and drop is one of those things that seems like it might be really tricky to do from first principles, but it's not that bad. All right, you just <clears throat> on left click, you set a state, keep track of the state that you're dragging something, and then just keep its position locked on the mouse. So let's handle the case of dropping the thing back onto the ground. So if you pull it, let's say if you pull it off of this UI rectangle, and you'll end up back on the ground. So, <clears throat> we'll want to see uh, if the drag item is not equal to nil and current mouse state dot left button is not true. So we're not pressing the left button anymore, but we were pressing it previously. All right, that means we've, have we stopped dragging an item? Uh, then we need to see uh, where it goes. So check dropped item. So we need to write that. So that will be Another UI function. <clears throat> and so we'll want to know where we want to know this rectangle. And this is good, because this is going to let us uh, deduplicate some stuff here. So uh, get inventory rectangle. And that's basically going to be all of this. So we return that rectangle, and this will be uh, 
And this is now indirect.x. W. Excellent. Get inventory UI dot inventory right. I spelled it wrong both times. It's amazing. Okay. And so that means here, I think we can do the same thing. Uh, this is incorrect.y. Now we need the inventory rect here to see if the current mouse position is in it or not. So get the inventory rectangle. Um, the mouse position is UI dot current mouse state dot position. And then we want to check if that has an intersection with the mouse position, which we're just going to make a rectangle of size one. And we will just print out to see if it's working. player's inventory and drop it back on the ground where the player is. So So we'll need a new type on the game, a new input type, which will be drop item. So if this is out of the rectangle, um, we will just What do we do here? For now, we'll just return 
the item to say it's been dropped. Otherwise, we return nil. And then Go likes you to do things. Okay, so if item is not equal to nil, let's bring this up here. set the input type to drop item. And we'll clear out the current dragged item. Now the game needs a drop item function. We'll do this on character so that we could have, uh, we might later have monsters dropping items too, or non player characters or something. Um, so, pretty much be similar here, except that we'll be reversing it. So, characters.items will get deleted. Okay, so I think that should just be the reverse. And we'll add the event and say they drop something. We're running over by a little bit, but we're almost done. drop item to the events. Oh, it's the same. Can't do the same name. <clears throat> All right, 
let's see what happens. Okay, pick everything up. All right, it's back down there. It's kind of cool. Now we can move stuff around. All right, <clears throat> that's gonna be it for tonight. I'll hang around for a couple of minutes in case there's any questions about tonight's stream or previous streams. better with sound. Yeah, so next step will be for um, us to be able to take these items that we've picked up and also drag them onto the player, like equip them. So like helmets will be able to equip here, um, weapons will be able to equip here, and then that could modify your attack values or how much damage you take and stuff. All right, everybody, that's it for tonight. Good night, and uh, see you again soon.